Thank you for that really kind uh, introduction, and thank you all for coming. I'm going to break the fourth wall here because I like to pace. <laughs> um, again, thank you for coming out. Um, I have a personal and business interest in this topic. Uh, the personal is, is that I love Molly, I'm passionate about Molly. Uh, it's something that I get very excited about. I know that sounds weird to certain people, but uh, it is a, uh, a metal that I really enjoy uh, working with. I really enjoy the Molly market. Uh, and I want to point to some of the great analyses that a lot of these great analysts uh, are uh, giving during this conference. Uh, my talk will focus on higher level themes and trends uh, and uh, just want to leave you with a sense that there's a silver lining to uh, the, the Molly market uh, uh, right now. And, and we need to understand that there are some positives uh, in the market that uh, will be grounds for growth in the future. I have about 23 uh, slides of content, uh, about 20 minutes in total. I'm going to uh, talk in four areas. Uh, one is just an overview of Sierra Gorda. Uh, the second uh, is uh, just basically talking about some of the concerns of the marketplace, including uh, the introduction of Sierra Gorda into the market. I'll talk about some high-level demand trends. And then I want to end with sort of a positive note, again, to uh, really sort of make the case uh, that the uh, uh, Mali is, is a positive growth area for the future. Uh, you know, ask you the whole questions until the end of the talk, so let's uh, move forward. Here's our standard disclaimer. You can take a magnifying glass and read it later on. So Sierra Gordo overview. KGHM uh, Post Comments is a 50-year-old mining firm, one of the world's uh, largest producers of copper and silver and other metals. KGHM International is a subsidiary uh, based in Vancouver, Canada. Uh, we were purchased last year in the largest external acquisition ever by a Polish firm. Here's what we uh, produce in terms of nine basic metals. Uh, here's uh, where we are. We span over five different continents, uh, including uh, development uh, projects such as Sierra Gorda in Chile. Here are some other numbers that uh, sort of place KGHM uh, uh, within the context of other mining firms. Uh, besides being one of the world's largest copper producers, we're also the world's largest <coughs> producer of silver. And with the uh, Sierra Gorda project, we will uh, become one of the premier uh, Mali uh, producers in the world. Now, Sierra Gorda project, uh, as you probably have heard, uh, we are building with our partner Sumitomo uh, of Japan. Uh, we are going to start in second quarter 2014. Uh, we have over 3,000 people on the ground right now with more to come. I was just in Chile uh, at the uh, end of January, and it's just astounding the progress that uh, this uh, project has made, and just a huge scale. I mean, it's, it's almost epic of uh, uh, the, the machinery and, the, and the, the manpower and everything that's going on there. It's really an exciting time. Um, the project itself you know, has a lot of uh, good uh, particulars, uh, some of which are listed there. Uh, as some of you probably know, uh, the first five years of production will have, uh, on average, about 50 million pounds of production per year, with some of those years exceeding that 50 million pound mark. So we're only bringing just a little bit of molly to the, uh, the market. As mentioned, uh, KGHM is working with Sumitomo uh, of Japan. Uh, you probably have heard that our CapEx estimates have uh, gone up about 35% uh, from 2.9 billion to 3.9 billion. Uh, these are due to mostly external factors, and this is not atypical of a lot of new projects. Uh, whether you're talking about labor, uh, material, energy, uh, these things uh, have affected our project, uh, the Chilean peso has also been an issue. The average greenfield project these days is three years late. Unlike those projects, Sierra Gorda is going to be on time. 
So even though our CapEx is up, we are still going to be on time with a start in 2014, second quarter. It's happening. Speaking of Sumitomo, uh, Sumitomo Metal Mining has an over 400 year history in mind, uh, with uh, its founders creating the original copper smelting technique. And then Sumitomo Corporation is a diversified firm uh, with uh, many different assets around the world. Here's a, just sort of a map of some of Sumitomo's projects and operations that they're involved in. And KGHM, we're very excited to have Sumitomo as our partner in this venture. So let's get into the meat of the presentation. Uh, I understand that this facility looks over the city of London, or in the city of London. And about 100 years ago, there was a uh, gray-suited banker uh, who used to come every day to the city to work. He used to work for Lloyd's. Uh, this Sir Dower banker also moonlighted as a poet and author and critic. Uh, I'll show, him, show you a picture right here of him. His name was Thomas Stearns Elliot. He's a fellow American. I'm an American, but the British stole him. We never forgave him for that. <laughs> uh, but uh, he uh, was very famous for writing big poems such as uh, The Wasteland and the love song of J. Alfred Prufrock. Uh, if you guys know those poems, you know they're very light reading. I'm, I'm just kidding. Uh, but he did have a pithy quote, which I think is apropos to our worries and times. He said that anxiety is a handmaiden of creativity. Uh, now, if you know anything about Eliot's life and the times in which he lived, uh, he lived, and, and you know, when he wrote, after the Great War, when Europe was shattered uh, and the flower of England was mowed down in the fields of war. Uh, times were uncertain then, and in his personal life, things were uncertain. He dealt with personal challenges, and he realized that uh, anxiety, the anxiety he had, and the anxiety of the world had during that time, uh, can spur creativity. It spurred him to create the 20th century's greatest poems. And it's sort of like the Molly market right now, where you know, we have anxiety about where the future is headed. Uh, but we need to make sure that that creativity uh, that's being spurred by the anxiety is positive. And there's a question of whether it's positive or not. Because when you read the metals press these days, you see words like doldrum, storm clouds, disastrous. These are kind of the words that, uh, these are actual words from articles that uh, you see in articles recently about the Mali market, and uh, specifically when they talk about the introduction of Sierra Gorda into the marketplace. I had a few here just for fun. Lions, tigers, bears, oh my. You know, there's just a lot of consternation about where the market is going. It's enough with the, the fear and the, the anxiety to make anybody go a little crazy, you go a little, uh, be a, a little sort of worried about the situation, which is normal, because anxiety is normal in this type of circumstance. We're all trying to make sense of the, the topsy-turvy and the not-so-certain, uh, but we need to make sure that it is positive. We need to make sure that it spurs us to creativity to create success, not hand-wringing. We know what really is causing the issues in the Mali market. We know all these things. In economics, the engine isn't turning around, turning over fast enough. Uh, you know, it, 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 we're sputtering. In the political realm, we have stalemate in our halls of government and a lack of faith in our government, in our homes, and on, the, on our streets. And risk aversion. Uh, businesses don't want to stick out their neck too far. They want to live in sort of the, the safety of the just in time. <coughs> We all know these, and the analysts have addressed these and will address these. We'll talk about these in more detail, so we don't have to go into them much farther. But we know there's enough here to cause anxiety. Uh, it's not about Sierra Gorda. It's not about uh, you know, the issues of supply and demand. These are fundamental issues that we have to tackle. But I want to say that we're beginning to tackle them, that even though there are some issues, even though there are some challenges, uh, we can focus on the positive, because there is some positive news. 
For example, global manufacturing, still barely in expansion. At the same time, though, at 75% of the time since the second quarter of 2009, you've seen positive growth in manufacturing. Yet again, we are challenged. We do have situations where we have one, two steps forward or one step forward and two steps back, but we still have some growth. We still have some expansion. In steel, a consumer of molybdenum, we see the average quarterly production uh, has uh, not only uh, come back from the depths of the 2009 crisis, but also uh, in some cases has sort of over, overcome and, and increased over uh, the time before uh, the crisis in 2007. So we have come a long way. More positive news from uh, the United States in terms of capital expenditures and non-residential construction. Things uh, we look at in terms of uh, Mali, looking at the trends in Mali growth. Uh, so again, choppy, but positive. <coughs> Even in politics, we have, we have some challenges, but we have made some progress and there are some, some, again, some green shoots, some possibilities, basis for growth in the future. Yes, we have stalemate and sequester in the United States. We have uh, sort of a, a backlash against austerity in the EU. We have a stand-up comedian who uh, is a power broker in Italy. I mean, that's amazing to me. China. We have a huge economic and political transition right now. In India, uh, they're trying to reform uh, old rules that may be perceived as business unfriendly. In Brazil, they have high costs and other issues, uh, challenges with exports, but at the same time, you have some pluses. You have stronger banks. You have labor costs down. You have reform of uh, certain rules. Uh, you have uh, you know, expansion and, and trying to get rid of rules that really hinder businesses. We have possibilities here. We have some positives here that though we do have some challenges, we do have some things that can spur growth in the future. So let's get into this issue of sort of short, sort of case for hope for Mali. Now this is an oversimplification, and being a former banker, we used to uh, uh, say that prior returns, uh, prior, results, prior results don't guarantee future returns. But over, say, the past 10 years, most of the time, Mali demand has been growing, actually growing substantially, with you know, some periods like 2009 where you had some negative uh, demand growth. One thing to consider, too, in the Mali uh, industry, we tend to sort of use a long-term growth average of maybe about 3 to 4 percent a year. Uh, that's sort of our traditional view of Mali growth. But an argument can be made for a high case. When you look at something such as uh, total investment as percentage of world GDP, you see that Mali demand tends to track that pretty well. Um, in fact, it has, uh, Mali demand has grown about 5% faster uh, than uh, that number, uh, total investment as percentage of GDP. So using these figures, let's do sort of a quick and dirty supply demand sort of balance. Uh, it's not going to be too detailed, but I just want to talk about some key overall issues. So let's add supply. These are the bars with uh, uh, Sierra Gorda is in these numbers, by the way, uh, and starting in 2014, uh, with some newer, smaller uh, mines uh, starting later uh, in the period. And then let's add a sort of traditional 3 to 4 percent demand growth curve. In our opinion, you don't see world-ending supply surpluses, even with Sierra Gorda and these numbers, based on our analyses and based on our view of a traditional demand. Now let's add a third line, which we call our optimistic hockey stick case, which actually is 6% growth. Not that much bigger than the 3 to 4% growth which you look at that and there argues for additional supply maybe in future years. And that's possible. 
Well, let's be clear. Current mines are undergoing expansions. We have projects under construction. Uh, in both of these, current mines, expansions, as well as um, mines currently under construction, can probably <coughs> handle a lot of this additional growth. I think any company that would want to bring up or start up a mine uh, that has high cost production, uh, particularly primary production, would be challenged in this environment. Um, and high cost mines will be challenged going forward. The economic justification for such production will be very hard to make because you do have current byproduct production uh, as well as uh, um, other new mines that can ramp up and are more efficient and cost effective. So something to consider. So to wrap this up, how do we deal with our anxiety in the marketplace? When I was in banking, we used to say when the market is going up, everybody's a genius, all right? Uh, everybody's making money, everybody's successful. Fact of the matter is, is that true genius comes when times are uncertain and the path is unclear. And that's the situation we're in now. Uh, but that presents an opportunity for us. Even though we have a world trapped in amber due to indecision, that doesn't mean that we need to stand still. What we need to do as suppliers and our consumers, we need to be innovative in terms of new products and new approaches. The pathways to success and from the old century don't work anymore. We need to be innovative and different. We have to have a customer focus. Everybody talks about a customer focus, but especially in molybdenum, and especially in the steel and alloy segment, we need to understand the challenges that they face. We need to understand uh, the difficulties that they have. We need to be efficient, more efficient in terms of operations and safety. Uh, KGHM has a value of zero harm, uh, where we have um, a drive every day to make sure that we uh, are non-invasive in safety and health and environmental issues. And we need to be flexible on both sides, on the consumer side and on the supply side. On the supply side, we need to, again, be more flexible for our consumers. On the consuming side, they need to understand that it takes a bundle of money and a lot of time to run a mine. And we need to make sure that we understand each other's realities uh, so that we can move forward and, and gain success together. Because ultimately, yes, anxiety in the marketplace uh, you know, can spur some creativity, but should spur creativity and creative ways towards success and not towards hand-wringing. And I think in Mali, we have a great opportunity in our mind and as a Mali industry in general to really do some things differently, uh, to uh, you know, really sort of take advantage of, I think, the bright future that Mali has. So, Again, that's my talk, and happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any questions for Kevin? Maybe I, I could just, just lead off with a question, if I may. Sure. Um, it, as, as more uh, moly uh, is produced as a byproduct of copper, mm -hmm. is a natural consequence of that more volatile moly prices? I think ultimately it, it, uh, it depends on the demand situation. Um, also, sure, certainly uh, byproduct production tends to be more volatile, but I think, you know, uh, I think we need to, as suppliers, you know, make sure that we, especially from a consumer perspective, to manage our supply in a fashion that is more regular for our consumers, and thus that may have a uh, benefit in terms of uh, managing the price in a fashion that is less volatile. Um, so constant supply, efficient supply, uh, will in the end, I think, uh, mitigate any type of you know, up and down movements. But to, to your point, you do have introduction of new supply once in a while, and that can have an effect on price. 
Any further questions? John? What cash costs are you uh, r running at, and um, how's the sort of uh, situation in the current molly market affecting your thinking? Good question. I know you're going to ask the first question, and the uh, the cash costs. The answer to that one is very low. <laughs> uh, the second uh, question: What is what thinking uh, do we have? Um, you know, I th again, I think we have an opportunity as well as other producers, but I think we, we also have an opportunity to break the rules. Uh, that, uh, like I said, we, we have the opportunity to create something innovative for our customers. Uh, and uh, we, we see some room, not just from a supply perspective, but also from a solutions perspective, uh, where we can uh, you know, really sort of uh, uh, provide something uh, creative to the marketplace. So, if there's anything that uh, the market has informed us of, is that uh, new thinking uh, can, uh, uh, it, it, there's room for new thinking. What kind of uh, new thinking are you thinking of? <laughs> You'll be hearing a lot more of our new thinking over the coming year. <laughs> so stay, t stay tuned. Can you be more specific on the, on the price, how, how, low you, how low you are? I, that's something that we haven't released yet, so. I'm sort of barred from mentioning. You will, you will be releasing that in the near future. Well, I, I, I think we'll give an indication, but like I said, when I say very low, it is very low. Extremely low. That's why I'm smiling. Mm -hmm. Good, okay. Well, I'd like to thank all of our speakers. Oh, there's another question. Beg your pardon. Hi, Kevin. Hi. Good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, question is, what do you estimate your production to be in uh, 14, 15, and 16? 14, 15, and 16. Like I said, what, what we have said is that on average, we would be producing about 50 million pounds. Now, assuming that we start in the second uh, quarter of 2014, mm -hmm. uh, you, know, you, you could do the math and say that we're not going to do 50 million pounds uh, the first year of production. Uh, but uh, uh, like I said, in certain years, we'll be making more than uh, 50 million pounds per year. Uh, so if you sort of take an average of those first five years, um, you know, that's where we get our number. So, again, it, it, it's, it will, the first year will be very interesting for us, but, but we will start up then. It has been said that you know, the production is going to be 50 million for the first three years and then 30 million thereafter. Is that right? No. <laughs> no, uh, like I said, uh, numbers you can use are 50 million pounds on average for the first five years, and then it moderates to about 15 to 20 million pounds. Uh, so, uh, you know, we have a feasibility study out there uh, that, uh, you know, you can take a look at. Yeah. Though, I mean, you know, the numbers have probably changed since then. Any further?